as long as everything worked correctly, we are going live. Let's see here. There we are. There we are. A lot of people are coming now. Here. Oh, let the people come. Hey, people, what's up? What's up? They're coming on now. All right. I don't know if you're watching, John, like on your phone or something. Like, you can watch the live that way if questions pop up. Oh, okay. I will try to do that. Let me see. Yeah. You can go to my page and watch it. Hey, y'all, what's up? Rhonda, I see you. Whitney, I see you. Sir James, I see you. Sammy, I see you. Alicia, I see you. What's good? Everybody, come on in the room. John, I see you. <laughs> Do us a favor. Y'all know what time it is. It's 2 o'clock. It's let's, let's Talk Worship with my guest, John Wiles. Y'all know what to do. Let's make Jesus famous and let's take worship worldwide. Hit that share button, putting it all over the world. Let's share this. This is an awesome time. I love Let's Talk Worship sessions um, when we're able to talk about not just what we do, um, but what we live, what we see, um, things that happen. So we are excited about this opportunity. Last week, we were blessed to have um, Ms. LaRue Howard with us. And this week, we are blessed to have my brother, my friend, John Wilds with us. So we are so excited. Are you trying to play something right now? <laughs> no, I, I dropped my phone. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> So excited to have my friend, my brother, John Wilds on here with us. Um, this is awesome. They're saying hi to you in the comments. I don't know if you saw it or not, but they're, they're, they are saying hello to you in the comments. Oh, stuff. Hello, everybody. <laughs> so um, this is uh, going to be a great opportunity. So um, John, won't you just give them a little bit of background about yourself, where you are before we get started? And maybe some people, I'm not sure where they've been, but they may not know who you are. And so uh, go ahead and share with us just a little bit about yourself and where you are and all that stuff. Yeah, well, I am in Daytona Beach, Florida, um, the worship pastor at Calvary and uh, Calvary Christian Center. And I've been here uh, seven years now. Time is flying. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I've been in full-time ministry since 2005. And um, yeah, that's a little bit about me. I live here with my wife and my kids and we're just trying to make an impact in our local community here. That's awesome. They said I have some echo. Do you hear echo, John? Well, you just have, I think that's the reverb on your mic. You're trying to be all fancy. Am I? <laughs> you know what? Okay, it's gone. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'll never say, you got a little echo, extra echo going on. I did have a little <laughs> bit of reverb. I, everybody knows I like reverb. Anyway, so um, we are excited. So uh, Pastor John, um, we've known each other. How long have we known? We met in, um, I know you were at Church on the Living Edge. I think that's the first time we may have met and talked personally. So it, it's been, it's been, I feel like it's been over 10 years. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's really been over 10 years. Yeah. So, um, John and I met. I went to a service out there with some friends. You know who it was? It was, I think it was, no, it was before that because I came to a service when Bishop Bismarck was there. And that was the service that you shared some information with me about you possibly coming to Daytona. And I was like, oh, God set it up <laughs> coming out to Daytona. So that that was awesome. I, I had the pleasure of um, serving and being a part of the music ministry at Calvary Christian Center under uh, Pastor John Wilds. And I'm gonna tell you, I was there um, about two years, two and a half years, and the stuff that I learned under his leadership just literally has, uh, it's, it's so people that are here from Crossover Church, what you hear, what you see, I learned that from this guy. So um, a, a guy you wanna talk about, about excellence and um, doing things with excellence. That's this guy right here. So um, he has been a godsend to my family. 
um, to myself. He'll probably never know it. We joke and we play around a lot and tease each other, um, calling each other monkey and goat. But uh, other than that, <laughs> that is our brother relationship. That's our friendship. But he's just absolutely a blessing. Um, so today, John, I, I want to talk. So we do this thing called Let's Talk Worship. And really what happened, I'm not sure if you know, but a couple of weeks ago, I was doing um, a live worship set on Facebook Live. And the Holy Spirit really moved and he did something. Um, so, so profound, um, where really, honestly, I, at that moment, I stopped playing the keys and I stopped, uh, even singing songs and I began to just cry out in the Holy spirit. And, um, you know, the Holy spirit dealt with me when that was over. He was said, now you, you can't just demonstrate, but you got to teach. And he was like, you got to talk to the people about what it was, what happened, how, why, when do these things happen and, and why I do certain things. There was another moment where worship was happening. And I almost, I almost felt like this pressing that happens sometimes when we're um, in worship, like, go, 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 go harder. And God told me, like, nope, back off, stop. I've done what I've come to do. And so people, I, I know there were people on there that were like, well, why didn't he go harder or why did he go further? And so it became this moment of just teaching. And so the past couple of weeks, we've been doing these Let's Talk worship sessions. Um, the people have been coming on here and asking questions of how to handle certain things. Uh, we had a great question on um, Tuesday. Um, somebody asked, what do you do when you hit a wall in worship? It was like, Woof. Or, or I changed it to what do you do when you've hit a ceiling in worship? How do you handle that? Another question was, what do you do when the spirit is moving in the service and you feel it that you're supposed to keep going, but the pastor comes and cuts it off? What do you do? And so it was it was actually very educational because you had so many people with different answers. And so we were looking at those things and talking those things. So I thought it would be cool to get some of my worship leader friends to come on and talk about um, this thing called worship. Because I think a lot of people just see us with a microphone in the front and singing. And they're like, oh, yeah, they just sing some songs. Oh, they pick the songs. They teach the vocals. Worship leader. And I'm over here like, y'all have no idea. <laughs> you know, it's so much. It's so much more of that. So, hey, Lisey. Lisey's on there. Sorry. I love Lisey. Um, so <laughs> so um, I, I want to start off. I want to ask your question. I'll ask you a question, and I, I've asked basically everybody that's come on this. Um, where have you seen worship, or have you seen worship change, or have you seen anything happen since this whole pandemic, since this whole um, quarantine has happened? Have you seen it change in people, or have you seen it change in yourself? Where have you seen worship come go since? We've started this whole thing about six years, about six, six years, six weeks ago to now. Have you seen anything happen with worship? Yeah, I've seen, uh, well, I've seen two things. I've seen in some instances, um, worship go deeper. Obviously, when you don't have uh, the crowd and all that kind of stuff happening, you kind of got to focus on the one again. Yeah. I've seen that happening in some instances. And unfortunately, in other instances, I've seen people uh, starting to worship their worship. And so, I mean, you know, I mean, not to be a Debbie Downer, the, the critical thing for us right now is that we don't worship our worship. Like there doesn't always have to be something happening. And uh, I think that's one of the things that has been ringing in my heart lately is let's not try and just find something to do. And this is in terms of worship as well, but also uh, just in our everyday lives, but I won't go there right now. I'll talk about, you know, <laughs> question. Uh, but like, you know, it could very well be easy to begin to worship our worship in the sense that, you know, now everybody's online, everybody's an evangelist, everybody's a, a prophet, a pastor, a teacher, a worship leader. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think ministry has to continue. And obviously it's going to be accelerated. Um, you know, it's being accelerated at a, at a pace we've never seen before because everything is digital now and everything's online. Everything can reach uh, the whole world. So mm -hmm. uh, I think obviously there's a lot of good to that. But then, you know, you have the side where I was saying people are worshiping their worship. There has to be this next YouTube video. There has to be this next uh, this next album and there has to be this and there has to be that that we that we use to consume. I think these are great tools. Um, but at the end of the day, what I am seeing in a positive way is that people are going deeper in their worship because the crowd is gone. Yeah, it's a really good thing. 
Yeah, that's that. It's important. You, it's, it's awesome you said that. Um, we had um, my mom was on here about a week and a half ago, and she said something so profound. Even every time something like this comes up, and what you just said, "Don't worship our worship." Um, my my mom sit, shared that she felt like we were in a season where God was kicking the fluff out of the church. It's literally what she said. You see, her, like you see him kicking the fluff out of the church because we're we're now in a place where. Um, you can see the performance being exposed. Um, you can see the the um, where everything was all what seemed to be about the performance, and um, we took our 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 eye off what you said. The one, you know, I, I found myself in this in this moment where we had we're having worship, and even though it's pre-recorded and there's nobody out there, um, that I'm really finding myself. I'm. I'm it's even more than ever. I'm focusing on him because there are no other people out there. I shared last week when uh, Rue was on that Pastor William McDowell shared um, a statement that I, I absolutely love and live by. He says, he said, you don't, we don't command people. We command the atmosphere. And, you know, so looking out there when there's nobody out there, it's like, well, when I'm normally saying, hey, clap your hands and I'm telling people what to do and we don't have to do that because there's nobody there to tell that to it's like, what are you really doing? So I began to shift my uh, commands to not people and to the atmosphere where I was telling the atmosphere to change and telling the atmosphere to do things. And so that's, that's profound that you say that. Um, and don't worship our, uh, our worship is, is so important. It's so vital to understand because I think that um, there are times where we, we consciously are not even thinking that. Well, but we may go back and look at it and say, what was I just doing? You know, and so that's awesome that you said that. So my, my next question is, so now that we've seen where that is, where do you see worship going to from here, moving forward as things are starting to opening back up? You may have some buildings that are going to open back up. You're going to have some churches open back up by the grace of God. Um, we're going to start getting back to um, this, this so-called normal that we were used to. Where do you see worship going now? from here to, to um, where we are going to the future? Where do you see it going? Well, I see an increase of, of deep worship. I see an increase of it. I see an increase of, of humility. I think what we're experiencing in this season, now what I'm about to say has implications on so many levels, but uh, just as it relates to worship, if we process this season properly and learn what we need to learn in this season, mm -hmm. we'll be able to take uh, the revelation of this season into the next. Wow. And I don't think that at any level we need to go back to normal. <clears throat> I think we need to redefine what normal is for sure. us. And um, and so if, if we process this season properly and learn everything God's trying to teach us in this season and really walk with him in a new way during this season, I think it'll actually lead us into uh, a greater next season. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, as it relates to worship, like if, if your private time is going deeper, um, then obviously when it's time to go public again, uh, there's going to be a greater overflow. And I think it's really important for us to literally not go back to normal. Don't, don't go back to normal. Take all that you've learned in this season and all that you've become in this season, because I think a lot of us are becoming something deeper in this season too um and i'm not trying to use church lingo i know i keep saying season <laughs> saying that because this is literally a season yeah uh, you know we're not going to always be fighting um this virus um but hopefully we won't always be <laughs> fighting for attention either so like mm. like i said before the crowd is gone <clears throat> and now we have you know i remember um uh, Todd White, he said something about, um, I think it was him, it was either him or someone else who was uh, about to start a new job. And they were so excited that they would have, you know, they would be in a position where they could minister to people and just share the gospel. And they're like, excited to be on this job. Tons of people are going to get saved. And I'm going to reach out to everybody. I'm going to get everybody saved. I'm going to minister to everybody. And then when they got the job, they were actually put in a position where they weren't around anyone. They were like mm -hmm. in the back stalking by them, stalking by themselves. And 
and they, their heart was broken because they're like, I have nobody to minister to. Lord, I thought I would be able to use this as a platform to minister to people. I have nobody to minister to. And the Lord's response was, what about me? Woo! Minister to me. And, yeah. and of course, his heart broke and there was a, a revelation there and transformation. But I think that's what's happening right now. Like, we're like, the people are gone, which they're not really gone, but the people are gone. They're not before us mm -hmm. in, in the traditional sense. And here we are, and we're in front of a camera that's not a person. It doesn't interact with us. It's not saying amen. It's not shouting. The computer isn't crying. You don't see tears on the computer's face. And so there's this thing where we are now faced with reality. Like, are, have, we been, have we been seeking a response? Or have we really been seeking the presence of God and literally just ushering people to him? And that being the, the goal and the focus. And so if we have learned in this season that it actually doesn't take a crowd to worship the Lord, it doesn't take a crowd to actually feel his presence. It doesn't take a crowd to, to, to sense, you know, I mean, goosebumps and all these things that are great. It yeah. doesn't take a crowd for those things to happen. Those things can happen right here upstairs by myself with the Lord. Um, and I don't even need, I don't need an instrument. That's the thing. I play an instrument and I love playing music is, I mean, since I was six years old, I've played music. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, no knock to instruments or anything that we use, any tools that we use. But the most important thing is that I am an instrument. Like there's yeah. breath in my lungs. I can clap, I can shout, I can dance. I can do all of that by myself. Um, and, and so if we take what we've learned from this season into the next season and take that revelation with us, don't go back to normal. Don't go, oh, the crowd is back. Now we're gonna really go mm -hmm. after no, really go after God now so that when the crowd is there, you're able to just invite them into that experience. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and mm -hmm. let us exalt his name together. That's just an invitation for you to be a part of this experience of, of literally just offering yourself to the Lord in, a, in, a, in such a fresh way. So if we do that and process this season properly, I think we're going to go into the next season and really see a greater manifestation of God's presence corporately. But I think the focus right now needs to be, you can actually have a greater manifestation of the presence of God in your home all by yourself with no one there. So do that as much as you can. Experience him, encounter him, let him speak to you. Nathan Moore, and I know this is a long answer. Nathan Moore said something to me that is really sticking with me and it, I keep hearing it. It's like haunting me in the, in the best way possible. He said, John, your revelation will become their breakthrough. Mm. So I think the deeper we go, even as worship leaders, and the more revelation we get of who God is and how near He is, how near He is to us, um, everything that we encounter in God's presence, He gives us greater revelation. He gives us wisdom. He gives us everything. Um, our revelation will actually become someone's breakthrough. So um, that's yeah, powerful. That's, that's what I'm expecting. That's that's powerful right there. I, I shared that this morning, um, and I, I say it a lot, but that, especially as worship leaders, we can't take anyone corporately where we've never been privately. So to even hear that um, on a deeper level for me, that, um, you know, your your revelation is could be somebody's breakthrough, because um, as a worship leader, it really does uh, charge my heart um, and gives me a, a heart check of am I doing and am I pursuing him the way that I should be? Am, am I pursuing him um, with everything that I have? Um, so that, that's powerful uh, to hear. I, I was looking for this post because um, a while ago you wrote a post on, on Facebook that um, really touched my heart. And I want to I wanna talk a little bit just about it for a second. Um, some people may not know, and this is just the type of person that John Wilds is. I'm going to tell you straight up. But John Wilds has a video on on YouTube that has literally gone beyond. The, I'm trying. I I tell my friends like, what's the next word higher than viral? Because that's what this video has has done. Um, and it's a video um, with him and and Stephanie Gretzinger, and um, it's it's um, it was Waymaker, right? I think it was Waymaker. And this song had literally has gone, gone viral. Um, and he, John is my friend. And there were moments that I wanted to call him be like, and actually just talk about like, oh my gosh, do you, are you seeing this and everything? But every time I thought about it, I got a gut check, like, nope, nope, nope. Uh, and I'm like, okay. 
And you put a post back in January. I'm going to read it real quick because I want to talk about it for a second. And uh, it says, I've learned not to gauge my success by how many people are proud of me. Success is not fame, fortune, applause, opportunities, platforms, or anything of that sort. Success is having the smile of God. If he's not smiling, I'm not winning, period. Bro, when I read that, I was like, holy cow. Because I know that there, as while I also worship leaders, um, you and I both, we're artists. <laughs> we, we are artists. So there is this thing of, of, of wanting or, you know, trying to be as successful as we possibly can be in the artist sense. Um, um, but I read this post and I thought about how I wanted to call you so bad and be like, oh my gosh, bro, this thing, man, are you watching this? This is crazy, bro. You're blowing up. And I always got a gut check about it. And then I read this post and I was like, that was why. Um, so I want you to talk a little bit about this because we do have a lot of artists that are actually watching. I'm looking at this now and, and, and tell me kind of, I don't know if you can remember where you were at, the, what you were feeling, how you, um, you know, what posture you were in that made you write this? Was there anything that sparked that made you write this? Um, because I mean, just that last, that last line alone hit me. If he's not smiling, I'm not winning, period. Like that was powerful. So where were you? What kind of headspace were you in when, when you wrote that? So honestly, bro, I have something that I do. And I, I always rehearse this because, you know, I told the Lord even when I was much younger that um, sure, it'd be great to succeed, whatever that means. And it would be great to, you know, even have an album that does really well and all this stuff. But I actually told him, I said, but I want to do it in your time. And if, if I'm not ready for it, then I'm okay just being where I am, what I'm doing, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's not settling. It's literally, I've seen what uh, success and fame and all these things do to people. And not to say I'm any better than anyone, but I just, I think it's really a matter of me knowing myself and knowing exactly where I am. But, you know, when people say I'm proud, I, there's nothing wrong with telling somebody, I tell people all the time. I love telling people that I'm proud of them. I believe in them. Um, you know, I try to champion people as much as I can. It's something that's actually one of my favorite things to do mm -hmm. because I know it means so much to people when you just say, Hey, I'm proud of you mm -hmm. and get them to, to know that God's proud of them too. But um, so that was happening around that season where, you know, friends and their friends that are, you know, just wanting to encourage me. And so they were doing that. And I had this moment with the Lord and I said, Lord, you know, I'm hearing this a lot right now in this particular season, but are you proud of me? Hmm. That, that to me means more than anything, like literally anything. And I continually and constantly check the posture of my heart because I don't want to, you know, William also said something excuse me, William McDowell, he said something years ago, uh, I had him come and, uh, and speak to a handful of young teenage worship leaders. Um, and uh, William came and he sat in front of them and he said, deep down, we all have a desire to be worshiped. And when he said that, I was like offended. It struck this nerve, <laughs> like, what? I don't want to be worshiped. But as I continued to listen to what he was saying, it was so true. We all love attaboy. Good job. I'm proud of you. You did good. Man, you're awesome. Like it does make you feel, you know, wow, thank you, you know? Yeah. And I got the heart behind what he was saying. And it's so true. Um, but he said, we are not built for worship. We're not built to be worshiped. We are built to worship. And so that's where we we go wrong if we're not careful that we actually receive that we you know um and i say it this way god will share the stage with you in 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 the sense that he'll put you on platforms he'll give you influence he'll give you um you know clout or whatever you want to call it he'll share the stage with you but he'll never share the glory that literally is hold on hold on hold on hold on that's good dot so <laughs> 
Just that part right there. He'll share the stage with you, but he'll never share the glory. I like that. Keep going. <laughs> he, will never, he will never share the glory. And you have to say constantly, Lord, okay, I don't want the glory. Mm. Glory will actually kill you. Um, and so I don't want that. I'm not trying to die that way. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to be a person who dies taking God's glory. Like that, I don't want that to be my story at all. Mm. And so I just try to make sure I have this conversation with myself and with the Lord. Anytime before I take the stage, I say, Jesus, I need you. And I'm reminding myself that I need him, but I'm also confessing to him that if anything is going to happen of significance, he's going to have to be the one to do it. You can use me if you want, but if you want me to stand on that stage and shut up and you just do whatever, I'm okay. I'll sit on the floor and just watch you do whatever you want to do. It, wow. it can't be about me. So that's where my headspace was at that time when I wrote that post. Like my success can't be gauged on whether I'm selling this many CDs or have this many views or this many followers. Like, do I see those things? Yeah. And I have people all the time that remind me of that stuff. And so anytime that happens, I know they don't mean anything by it, but anytime that happens, I say to myself, Lord, Lord, thank you for that. But it's not, it's not about that. So help me stay focused on you. Help me stay focused. What do you want me to do? So um, that's where my headspace was at that time. It's so important for all of us to do that. Like, it's just a heart check. Yeah. And I try to do that constantly because I know I don't deserve it. Like, you know, I know where I came from. I know I shouldn't be here today. I, you know, we can forget sometimes that we've not always been, um, you know, used by the Lord. You know, we've not always uh, had it all together and all this kind of stuff. And you got to remind yourself, I actually don't have it all together. So anything that's happening right now, it's the Lord's doing. And so, yeah, that's where my headspace was. Wow. That's, that's good, man. I, I just loved it. Like the, the, if he's not smiling, I'm not winning. And I, and I literally just thought about, and I closed my eyes, like, Lord, are you smiling? You know what I'm saying? I, I literally just thought of that. Um, even as um, to, to, to be a little bit more visual with it, I, I thought about, I, I grew up playing sports and um, my dad was um, very, very into uh, my brother and I playing sports. And I remember him he, being at the games and taking us to the practices. And I, I remember some of the practices or the games he would be at. And if I made, missed the catch or I did something, I'd look over. Cause I was like, it was like, I was checking for the approval of my, of, of daddy, like what I do. But when I did something good, I looked over and I saw the nod, I saw the smile and it, it just, it elevated where I was at. And it was almost as if I gained some super uh, power strength as, as, a teen, as a young boy to finish that game and play even better. And I literally just thought of that, like, daddy, are you smiling? Are you, are you, are you proud of me? Are you, are you happy for what I'm doing? So um, I literally, I thought of that when I read that and it just, it really just changed my whole outlook even moving forward. Um, and that's something else too, um, worship leaders that are watching. I, I hope that you understand and that you realize that um, we are worship leaders. And I tell my team this all the time, but I, we are still human. Um, we are definitely not perfect. We definitely are, don't have it, have it all together. Um, you know, God still works through us, um, even in the, in, the, in the midst of, even in the present. And so I, I'm, I still learn every single day. And that's one of my biggest things is I'm always looking to learn. I'm always looking, what can I do to make things better? What can I do? To, God, how can I please you even more? Give me, give me more, God. I, you're filling me up with stuff, but I overflow this sucker, man. I want, I want more. So I hope you worship leaders are, are understanding that day. And the, I feel like the moment that we realize that, oh, I got it all, is the moment we've lost everything. Um, you know, it's important that we, we understand and that we remain humble and that we remain teachable, um, that we remain absolute teachable um, because that, that's so important. John, real quick, so for the, some people that are on here, I've been asking this question um, and I think people have been asking this question and looking at it. What does the posture of worship look like to you? If, what what does the posture of worship look like to you? The posture of worship is literally surrender. Mm -hmm. um, it's Romans 12, which is my favorite scripture. Uh, I beseech you therefore, brethren, or I urge you in view of God's mercies, that you present your bodies living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto God. This is your spiritual act of worship, or this is your reasonable service, one translation says. Like, 
Um, you know, I say it all the time and I don't want to be dead horse. I, I know that you've heard this, me say this before, but Romans 12 puts us in our place. God's on the throne. We're on the altar. And that has to remain our posture. He's mm. on the throne. We're on the altar. And so he's on the throne, but he's also, he's on the throne of our hearts and only he belongs there. Nothing else belongs there. So my posture has to be complete surrender. And that's what worship is. It's a constant, consistent, continual yes to Jesus. And Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> worship is surrender. The mm -hmm. posture of it is surrender. It's a constant, consistent, continual yes to Jesus. Wow. And which is a no to everything else. Hmm. And do we always have that posture? No. Hmm. Uh, but we seek to, we, we try our best to have that kind of posture. And so we remind ourselves of our need for him, how good he is, how merciful he is, how merciful he has been, how merciful he will be. But also in view of that, literally looking at all he is and all he's done up to this point, the least we can do when it says reasonable service, that's our reasonable, meaning that's just reasonable. It's the least you can do. Yeah is give him this constant, consistent, continual yes. Um, so it means my posture is literal surrender. It's I surrender my pride, you know, in a moment where I want to be angry, I surrender that. In a moment where I want to have, you know, wrote, I mean, and I, it goes so beyond singing and all that kind of stuff. I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about like worship as a, we hear it, you know, we've heard it for years, a lifestyle. And it's mm -hmm. become the cliche thing to say, but literally it's seeking to just surrender, literally. Um, you know, it, the way I love my wife, the way I love my kids, the way I love my, my neighbors, all that kind of stuff. If I want to be upset with someone, if I want to hold a grudge, if I want to be bitter, it's literally surrendering those things. And because when you do that, you're saying yes to Jesus. Yes, I'll surrender. Um, yes, I'll love. Yes, I'll give up my pride. Yes, I'll give up my right to be right, you know. Yeah. Um, yes, you know, that's it's a constant, consistent, continual yes to Jesus. Wow, that that's powerful. The just the part even of the constant, consistent, continual yes to Jesus is a no to everything else. If you if you really um you know think about that, I wanted you to say it again because I knew my mother was gonna write it down, which she did. Thank you, mom. <laughs> and uh because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna meditate on that because that 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 was powerful and I think that it's important that um, that that we not just as worship leader but as everyone as workers um, that we understand what that posture looks like um, because we've been talking about it for the past few weeks that um, you've got so many people out here who are who just walk into a sanctuary on a Sunday morning and say uh, I sang songs and I lifted my hands therefore that was my worship. And, and not really checking the heart to see um, what was, where was my heart at in the midst of all these things. So, or, so in other words, was I really giving him worship or was I just giving him a performance? Um, you know, and then now I'm thinking about it, was he smiling at my performance? Um, so, you know, that's, that's definitely something uh, very, very, very powerful um, to think. So John, let me ask you a question. In, in this process, there's a lot of pastors on here um, and there are a lot of worship leaders on here as well. But as a worship leader, uh, and I asked this question to who last week, I want to hear your take on it. As a worship leader, what can pastors do to, um, to help you in, in a time of worship? So you're the worship leader. They're, you're responsible for helping uh, usher in the presence of God and, and in worship and handle worship. What can, as a pastor, what can pastors do to help assist you as a worship pastor or as a worship leader? I think it starts literally for me, this is me personally, which mm -hmm. by the way, all the views and opinions expressed here are my own and not the organization. <laughs> no, but I think for me personally, uh, it has to start with being connected relationally. Yeah. Um, I think there is at some level, not, on, not at every level, but at some level, sometimes there is a um a going away from relationship 
as it relates to the pastor and the worship leader or the pastor and their staff, really, but pastors and the worship leaders. It's such a close knit, uh, a closely knit relationship that has to happen because what they both do, and I, I don't, I don't want to say this the wrong way, but what they do is so vital to uh, the life of the church, not the one person, but their responsibility, uh, their vision, their mission together. Um, and so uh, it has to start by being relational outside of and off the platform. And as that happens, you, you hear the pastor's heart, you know their vision. Uh, first of all, God called you to them. So obviously he called you to serve their vision. And so you're able to come under that um, and, and really serve it in a, in a very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, gosh, the word slipped my head. But anyway, as you have a, a better relationship with your pastor outside of the church and off the platform, it actually enhances what happens on the stage. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of friction that you see between worship pastors and their pastors, it actually stems from uh, there not being a good relationship aside from those moments. And so it's kind of like, you know, if I try to lead someone into a place of worship on a platform and I've spent literally no time investing in that relationship personally, even with the Lord, then there's not really going to be anything that happens. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of the same, you know, if, if my pastor is not invested in me relationally, then what we do on stage is actually not going to be as effective as it can be. So I would start there, but then, um, you know, communication, which also happens there. Communication. Um, if there's something that I'm doing that goes against the grain or against what you feel is your vision for worship or for what's happening in those corporate meetings, then that's something that we need to discuss. Um, I can't allow an opinion to form in my heart if I'm not willing to actually address it with my leader and say, you know, help me understand what you're needing. Help me understand what it is that you desire. Help me understand what God is showing you because, you know, the spirit is subject to the prophet, right? So, yeah. So to touch just briefly on what you said before, that was a question on the last session. You know, what if I feel like worship is supposed to continue, but the pastor comes up and cuts it off? Well, it's not up to me to decide what the spirit is supposed to do in that moment. I don't care how many platforms I stood on. If I'm standing on the platform of my pastor and I, I know it's God's, it's all, it all belongs to the Lord mm -hmm. there. God called me there to serve whatever the mission and vision is of this pastor. So all of that, all of my experience, all of my wisdom, all of my know-it-all, all that kind of stuff, it literally has to bow in that moment and whatever he sees you know, whatever God shows him, I fall in line with that. Now, if I have an issue with that, then, then we need to address like, what's the issue? Is there something being addressed relationally between you and the pastor? Can you communicate something? Maybe share your heart with him and what you were feeling in that moment. You never know what could happen. But um, so I think it starts by being relational off stage. So that would be my, uh, my desire. And I have that now. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pastor Raylan, I have a really good relationship. So if there was something and I was not leading the way he felt I should, uh, he would say something to me and I would, I would get his understanding. I would ask him for an understanding on what it is he desires. And so I think that has to, that has to happen. Mm -hmm. Now I can hear him now, son. <laughs> that's good so hey guys i'm gonna uh, ask another question but if there are individuals that are watching now i know sometimes you guys wait till i say it but you don't have to wait if you have any questions for john or if you have any questions for us you have any questions about worship please feel free to write it in the comments now we're looking at it and he put waymaker <laughs> i can't read none of that but i'm i'm praying i know it's god um <laughs> Um, but if you uh, have any questions for John, you have a question about worship, you have a question about worship leading, anything, go ahead and write it in the comments now and we'll be sure to get to it. Um, so go ahead and write it. Um, I want to ask John, I talked about it. I want to hear your answer on this one. So I talked about that hitting that wall. That it was really a big topic on Tuesday. We were talking about it. H how do you know when your season is up? 
how, how do you know when your season is up at a church? Maybe you are a worship leader at a church. And how do you know if possibly that is that your time or your season is is up leading there? I would say, really, I mean, you try to hear from the Lord in every season, right? So that has to be first and foremost, is, is God speaking something to you, which means you have to be still enough to hear. Mm-hmm. If you, I would say, if you can't hear the still small voice, then life is too noisy. And that can be your frustrations. It can be uh, your ambition. I mean, you don't always have to be frustrated. You can be ambitious too. Like, uh, I want to do more. I want to do bigger and better or whatever that is. Um, but it, it can also be frustration. Frustration. It can be, uh, I'm frustrated in this place or I've reached my ceiling and I'm this and I'm that. Um, and so I say, be still enough to hear God, which means you have to silence even your own opinion your own agenda, bring that all to the Lord, ask him if there's something in you that he needs to put his finger on to show you um, that maybe you're getting ahead of yourself. I would do that first. I always do that first. Um, Mm -hmm. And then as he begins to show you things, then you begin to see. But usually um, it's not necessarily frustration. It's just a constant uh, feeling of being unsettled. Makes sense. So it's not a frustration because sometimes it can, you know, you're literally frustrated. I've been in seasons where I've been frustrated and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm over it. Uh, And then I realized that I was actually overthinking things or I wasn't handling things properly or I wasn't communicating things. And so it built up this frustration. So you never want to make a decision based on anger or frustration ever. That's in any you know, any subject, but, sure. um, but especially knowing that there's a constant unsettled, like, I just don't feel settled. You bring that to the Lord and say, Hmm, what is this? And if, you know, more often than not, the Lord will bring confirmation and, and just, you know, kind of lead you into that, but then handling everything properly in that season. If you feel like your season is up, talk to the Lord instead of talking to this person, that person, that person, that person, you know, and I'm not saying you can't talk to someone, but it's not the time definitely to build an opinion about a season, you know, and I, I'm only saying this because sometimes we don't handle transition properly. Uh, Sometimes we feel a certain way and we'll be like, man, they crazy over here. I can't, (laughs) and uh, you know, more often than not, if I talk to someone who's going through that, I always ask, well, have you spoken to your pastor about how you feel? And more often than not, the answer is no. And I go, no. okay, well, you might want to, you might want to do that. Cause why would you leave without having relationship and, and actually saying, Hey, I'm feeling these things on my heart. Can you help me process this? If you don't feel comfortable enough to do that, then you need to address the relationship that you have. That's good, man. Well, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. So I do want to tell you guys, so if you've never, um, uh, been able to hear uh, any of uh, uh, Pastor John's music. He does have a website, johnwilds.com, right? Is that right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Johnwilds. <laughs> Johnwilds.com. You can go there and he's got music on there. Um, he also has apparel and clothing that you guys um, can get as well. Um, Calvary's worship team has released a couple of projects. Um, in the past few months, a uh, year and a half, really, in some incredible um, songs, um, just absolutely awesome material. Uh, I was a part of this house, and I still say it, I'm still connected to this house. I still call Pastor Rayleigh. Um, I still talk to him, and he, I still go to him sometimes. Um, just an awesome house. If you're in the Daytona Beach area, the uh, Ormond Beach area, you're looking for a good church home, I tell you right now, Calvary is it. They are, they are phenomenal. They're on fire. Um, they've got a great, great shepherd there who teaches word, y'all. They teach word up in there. Um, they've got an awesome music ministry, awesome kids ministry. They've got some dude that leads worship that has the range of a doggone, I don't even know what it is. It's just too high. Um, <laughs> but they have an awesome ministry, so you guys can definitely check them out. Johnwilds.com is his website as well. So I'm going to make sure that you guys go there, go on uh, Spotify and iTunes, go to Calvary, worship live, get their material, get those songs. 
put them in your car, put them in your listening material, put them in your playlist. He's got some awesome, awesome, awesome things, man. John, I love you so much, bro. I, I really do. I, I appreciate your, your friendship. Um, and, and definitely you said something earlier. Um, you are definitely have always been one of those ones that has encouraged me. Um, uh, I'm not going to lie. I love it to, when you call me sometimes or you tell me and just say, bro, I'm so proud of you. So that, that I, I thank you so much for that. He's come to Tampa since I've been here and done some, uh, he's done a chapel nights for us, which I took from him, by the way. Um, <laughs> but it's been life changing for our worship team. Uh, it's absolutely phenomenal. He not just a, he, not just a great singer, but seriously, uh, he he's just a, an awesome person who pours into uh, people. He he really does care about people, and I'm be honest with you. Sometimes that's that's hard to find in worship leaders. It is, but just somebody who uh, absolutely cares, genuinely cares about people and how people are doing. He is definitely one of those individuals. Um, he's working on a book. <laughs> Just wanted to get your response. <laughs> oh, maybe it's coming. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but no, he's got some great stuff. He could write a book, man. He's got some. He's got some great stuff. I don't care. Call it a memoir, or whatever. But he's got some great stuff, and uh, I'm just excited to see what God is doing in his life. I can always call on him and mess with him and tease him, and he'll do the same thing right back to me. Um, but it's, it was a pleasure having you on here today, John, man, we love you so much. Y'all, would you let John know how much you appreciate him in the comments, you know, to do, do a thumbs up, put some hearts, do something in those comments, let him know that you appreciate him and everything that he shared with us. I got some stuff known this guy for years, but I always learn stuff when I'm around him. So we appreciate you so much, bro. Anything you want to say before we get ready to get off? Yeah. I want to say thank you. Thank you so much for having me on, bro. Thank you to everyone who watched. I see all of you there. I couldn't reply because I guess I couldn't figure out how to reply while I was talking, but um, I love you all. I see your mom there. I love you. And uh, thank you, bro. I'm proud. Yeah, that was good. But I'll go ahead and say it. <laughs> but I am. I'm proud of you, man. Um, thank you for doing this. I know that there's a lot of people that are going to benefit from this and um, what you're doing and just bringing people together and literally none of us know it all. Yeah. I, you know, somebody said, you know, I want to talk to you cause you know what you're doing. I'm like, I actually don't, I still don't know. <laughs> but that's, and I want to keep it that way kind of, cause that's how I, I find to be uh, more impacted. Like is when you realize you don't know everything. And when you think you do, God shows you something else and you go, Oh, okay. So yeah. Um, but thank you so much, bro. I really appreciate you. I appreciate all that you're doing. I love that you lead worship like lives depend on it. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get her on here. She don't know it yet, but she's going to get on here. Um, Bishop Bishop Needham's on here. Bishop, we ready to come back whenever you ready, Doc. We were, Well, not right now. Who is it? Yeah, Bishop Needham. Bishop oh, Needham from yeah. uh, Living Way. Doing, we, we'll, we'll come back, get some of that good old food, some of that good cooking. Yes. Uh, so, so yes, we'll come sir. back. But uh, so good. Some of my teams on here. They say come back to chapel night. We'll get John back at chapel night and everything. My goal, and I'm gonna say with him on here. My goal for one of these chapel nights is to have John and some of the team come, and um, that would be. I think that would be a good one. Not to just bring John, even though John is awesome, but have John and some of the team come. Um, Courtney Rayleigh, who's there with them. Let me tell you something. Courtney Rayleigh is one of the most phenomenal worship songwriters I've ever heard in my entire life. Point, y'all. Some of y'all may say that y'all don't know. Courtney Rayleigh is one of the most phenomenal songwriters of our time. And I would say that in her face, outside her face, whatever. But some songs that we we start every rehearsal with, thank you, Jesus. We start with that song. We literally sing that song every my team don't even might even know it, but Courtney Rayleigh wrote that. And um just phenomenal. So I'd love to have some of her team come. Um, uh, some of his team come and, and um, minister. I think we'll, we'll make that happen. I know we will. I know we'll get it. Thank you, Jesus, is one of my favorite songs. So much so to where I'm going to say something here that I wasn't going to say. I actually love that song so much that I had to record my own version of it. Oh. Uh, so I, I did. I re we recorded it this week. Uh, just a, uh, a laid back version to kind of, you know, in this season, I feel like, and I know we're supposed to be ending, 
No, you're good. So I'll be real quick, but I know in this season, like there's a lot of negativity. There's a lot of fear, a lot of doubt, a lot of division, a lot of everything. The enemy is is using, is trying, I should say, to use so many things to like divide us, discourage us. Um, and he thinks he'll conquer, but he won't. So I think one of the things that have been critical for me uh, in this season is gratitude and um, gratitude, thanksgiving. These are things when you praise God, you can't praise him and complain at the same time. Yeah. So I just wanted to encourage people to literally, I, you know, I put a post up the other day about, you know, writing a list of the things, positive things that are happening right now, things that God has done for you, blessings that you can count. And begin to literally, you know, we used to say it a long time ago, count, count your blessings, name them one by one. That is, act, it's actually powerful when you do that. It it shifts, it, it shifts things, and it may not shift your your situation right away, but it will shift you. And as it shifts you, your situations follow. So, I think one of the things. So that I recorded that song because it has ministered to me so many times. You won't forsake me, for you have made me. Like yes, you not. find yourself with that. It's so. Good, man. Thank you, Jesus. You're always good. You're always good. He's always good. And his love endures. So I give you praise. And yeah. I think it's going to really help so many people. So anyway, I said that because that's, that's powerful. Love. That's your line. My line. Is, and in the process, I'll, uh, and in the prom, uh, what is it? And in your, in the process, I'll trust your promise. Woo! Every time I sing that, and in its process, I'll trust your promise. Because yeah. th if you think about that, and the process that we're in right now, how many of us are just, can just say, oh yeah, no problem, I trust you, God. Man, Thank powerful, you. powerful, powerful. Yeah, so you'll hear it soon. I'm I'm super excited. It's gonna- Thank you. Excited. So he's got more music coming, y'all. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> They've got some awesome uh, music coming. And um, y'all released one for Easter, right? Was it Easter y'all released a song? We did. So uh, for Calvary Worship Live, we released uh, a song called It Is Done. And uh, we released it for Easter, but obviously it goes beyond Easter because it's still done, isn't it? So yeah, <laughs> uh, so yeah that just came out. So that's on Spotify, iTunes, and all everywhere. Music. Yeah, song. powerful song, great music. Y'all go check that out and everything. So we'll have some fun. My, some of my team said it's they would love for you to come here, but they want to go there. So I already yeah. told them one of these times I'm going to bring them up there so they can uh, they can see and everything, see where yeah. I come from, see where I come from. Bring but um, I will bring it. We'll make it happen. My mom said, come to Raleigh. You already know that. So <laughs> we'll come to Raleigh as long as Nana make the Nana rolls and you make some, ban some banana pudding. We now, there. Now you there it is. <laughs> real, real quick. I love you, Mike Bajaya. It's one of my best friends. I love you. Oh, yeah? Awesome. Yeah. Anyway. All right. So um, thank you guys so much for watching, John. Thank you so much for being on here. This was awesome. Tomorrow morning at 11 a.m., guys, we are back with morning worship. And then this Saturday night, you do not want to miss it. We are doing a family night of worship at 6 p.m. And it's going to be awesome. Get your kids, get everybody, because we are going to kick it off with worship for the kids, led by Justice and DJ Butler. They are so excited to lead worship. They've been practicing. They've got their songs ready. they got dance moves. They're going to make me look crazy. But they're going to lead worship. That's this Saturday at 6 p.m., um, family night of worship. So get all the kids together. And then after that, uh, I'm going to go, we're going to take off. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're just going to worship God in the midst of this storm and do everything. God's going to show himself like he always does. So thank you so much again till next week, next Tuesday, we've got, let's talk worship with my friend and my brother, Nehemiah Samuel, who is the worship leader at Bible based right here in Tampa. It's going to be a good time. Thank you guys so much. We will see you later. Peace out.